that shit happened, the first instinct was to do what? Pull out the camera. My message would be, just be ready, man. Be prepared for what happens after your decision. Loud Genius. Loud Genius. Loud Genius. Loud Genius.com. Bria Janelle with Loud We are here at the opening day of the Tribeca Film Festival, and I've got an awesome lady. I'm going to allow her to introduce herself. She's got some great things that she's going to talk to us. But Camilla, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about why you're here. Thank you so much. Uh, my name's Camilla. I'm the director of Cop Porch, which is a documentary that's going to premiere at Tribeca on Sunday. So give us a creative process and the backstory as to how it came about, because you're not originally from the United States, so you have someone that's not from the United States capturing what's uh, such a big issue right now. I'm, I'm always looking for interesting people and interesting stories, and I guess stories that I didn't feel are being told. Um, so essentially, I saw this story and I wanted to tell it. Um, and actually, at the beginning, I, I actually looked for other directors to, I thought I would produce the film and I would find someone else to direct it. And actually, the story just started moving so fast that I just had to, like, literally jump on it and make sure. Because when you see the film, you'll you'll get this. But obviously, Ramsey Orta, who filmed Eric Garner, was dealing with legal proceedings. And so there was really a window of time that we had to start filming. I got nine videos all tampered with. They're using them against me in court. For my <laughs> My video don't count for no indictment. And you're the only one getting time out of the uh, whole shit. That's crazy. You filmed R.I.P. Eric Garner, you know what I'm saying? You filmed Joe in his last seconds of living, but you the only person being charged with a crime. Recently talked to Ramsey. How was that conversation? I mean, what is his mental state seeing that? I mean, he captured something that, you know, we thought, hey, this is good, you know, this will help, but it ended up hurting him almost in the long run. Um, Ramsey has, so yeah, we spoke a couple days ago um, and he's just been released from solitary confinement um, where he was in for a number, I think a number of weeks. Um, he, you know, he doesn't deal very well on his own. I think anybody in the world would not be happy having spent time in solitary confinement, but he's trying to stay strong. He really appreciates receiving letters, any kind of support. And um, I know he said that he's going to start some vocational training soon to do landscaping, which is something he's like really passionate about. So he's just trying to stay strong, but he needs, you know, any, any, you feel like picking up a pen, writing a letter to him, like just do it. Like being in prison is a really lonely experience. Now, how can people contact him? Do you have a direct contact information where people can write him letters, you know, just send him words of encouragement? Yeah, I have that. I'd love to give that to you in writing. Um, he's at Franklin Correctional Facility, but there's like a number of details that I, I want to share to make sure the letters go through. Um, so I'll give that to you. And if you can put that on your website, that would be amazing. He'd be so happy to hear from you guys. Cop watching. I mean, this deals with a lot. Obviously, you have the police versus community almost. What would your best advice be after going through this film and really having conversations with Ramsey? and other folks that have really been involved, the best advice that you can give on how to stay safe and, and, and knowing your rights? I think, you know, you have to educate yourself. Um, you have to read up, um, read up online. You can find information at wecoppush.org, uh, the ACLU, you know, different websites. And I think for me, the idea is just like, you know, I think as a community, in some ways, we've lost um, a little bit of the sense of supporting each other and creating a family. And I think cop watching and, and filming an incident is a way of actually supporting somebody else and that may be that you have a privilege that they don't have but it's an opportunity that you can have to at least like support somebody else even if they're not in the same situation as you. Before we let you go I gotta ask you a little, little birdie told me uh, that you like J. Cole no role models okay <laughs> I, I, I can't I can't let you go without talking about that why J. Cole why no role models okay, let's talk a little okay. hip-hop yeah uh, so basically while we were filming this documentary you know there's a number of, of tracks that just like when I hear them it just takes us back to driving around in the car like you know obviously Ramsey being with us um, just like everybody singing along um, and that was just one of them that there was a time we were driving through New York and like Kevin and Ramsey were in the car and that song came on by J. Cole and we were just like <laughs> Matt we're just like singing all those that silly shit you know uh, you know what the lyrics say you know what the lyrics say so it's also like a bit of a joke obviously like I'm the only lady in the car um, so that was cool and actually like one of the other tracks that's that's been really important um, was uh, White Iverson by Post, Post Malone um, and that song like once you get to know kind of Ramsey's story 
I'm not going to give anything away in the film, but like it, it really um, it speaks to a lot of shit that he's been through. So yeah, I, I think music has been a big part of it. And um, Chris Bowers is actually a fantastic composer who's worked on this. He's um, he's African American. He's based in LA. He's like one of the hottest talents like in the world right now. Um, and his music is just seriously dope. Um, there's some interest. There's some like fam famous people featured uh, in the mu on the music side, so you guys got to watch it to find out. How did you guys use music to get through those tough times? Like you talk about the J Cole and you know Post Malone, like Wide Iverson. Like those are songs that you know I really feel like really set the tone for those artists' careers. You know, so how did music help you guys? It really get through through some of those tough times. Uh, well, I think Ramsey, uh, well, actually, for all of the guys in the film, music is just a huge part of it. When I first met Ramsey, he was just plugged in, like, all the time. Mm. So he, like, wasn't even, he was just, like, singing his tunes. And then, they like, everybody has, like, different styles. And, like, Kevin's super, so Kevin is a fantastic rapper. Mm -hmm. He's really good. Okay. Um, so he's, like, yeah, we've had times where he's just, like, rapping away or we'll, you know, I had times where I was in Kevin's apartment in Baltimore and he just puts on like DMX or Styles P and then he's just like, he's just gone for like hours. We're just sitting there watching him, you know, rapping um, with the Xbox. So, you know, I, I think music has been a really important part of the film. Um, and I think it is this like way to kind of deal with some of the trauma that, that, that everyone kind of went through and me the least of it, I'm sure. I am sitting here with this fantastic lady. Obviously, y'all know that her hip hop uh, playlist on her iPod runs deep in her uh, iPhone. So if y'all want some new music, make sure y'all check out, check out Cop Watching. This is Bridge No, loudgenius.com. Make sure you guys stay tuned for more. We're live here at the Tribeca Film Festival. Loud Genius. Loud Genius. Loud Genius. Loud Genius.